Hey guys, welcome back to the 27th episode of Let's Play Space Engineers as a German Engineer. My name is Daniel, I've been born and raised in Germany, and I've been living and working as a software engineer for the last 10 or so years in the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley. This time we are going to do some more programming, some more scripting, getting stuff done that is not possible to do with just vanilla blocks. Specifically, there's two things in my mind that I want to get done today. First of all, I want to write a dashboard sync script. What that means is I have a bunch of dashboards around my base. Uh, I have the uh, inventory dashboard and I have my to-do list. And then over at the iSpace, all the way over here somewhere, we have another inventory dashboard and another to-do list specifically with items for the iSpace. And then we have our MMR, which is currently located over here, um, which also has an inventory dashboard. So it would be really great if we could just like have them all in one spot that we could see them uh, from our main base here and see like, for example, hey, how much more material is still at the MMR or how much hydrogen do we have accumulated at the ice base? Stuff like that. And right now we, we can't. Uh, so like if I wanted to know what's going on at the ice base, I would have to go all the way over to the ice base. If I want to know what's going on at the MMR, I would have to travel over to the MMR and check that out. So if we had a script that could automatically sync dashboards from different locations, I think that would be really cool and really useful. Um, the other thing is I want to figure out how to use the dashboard screens in cockpits. Um, I thought about this specifically for the MMR over here, um, but I think like other cockpits have this as well. Like if, if we're here in this cockpit as an example, right? We have a little display down there and we have a couple of displays up here and they show us some generic information that may or may not be interesting. Um, but we should be able to display information on them um, the same way we do on these LCD screens. Uh, and so I want to amend our, our inventory dashboard script to be able to write to these cockpit dashboards uh, or, or in fact, any block that provides a, a, a screen. For example, the programmable block also has two screens that you can write to. So that's kind of the idea. With, with that capability, we can then show information in our um, cockpit screens, like for example, the to-do list or the inventory uh, dashboard, especially I think for small grid ships that like the, the, the cargo ship, it would be really cool if we could display like what it has loaded in a little screen in the cockpit instead of having to have a separate LCD panel somewhere on, on the ship. That said, I think there's also a great synergy between these two things, between the synchronization script and the capability of displaying uh, data on the um, cockpit screens. Specifically, I want to make the synchronization script, want to build it in a way that it can write and read from uh, these cockpit screens as well, not just from LCD panels. And because of that, I think we should start with the support for LCD panels uh, in our old script. Because if we figure out how to do that, then we can incorporate that knowledge into the, the next script that we're going to build that for synchronization between different screens. And since we're going to be scripting, we are going to be pulling up VS Code and diving right in. So let me get that pulled up and get back to you in a second. So we're in VS Code here. I actually uh, increased the font size a little bit and I've put the, the browser window right next to it here so that we, can, we don't have to tap between the browser and VS Code. We can have our documentation up on the right hand side and then VS Code on the left. And I hope uh, the size, the, the text size, font size increase kind of helps you guys actually see what's going on. Um, so I've pulled up my inventory dashboard script and the thing that we want to kind of like check out first is like console name here. Um, so this variable right here, uh, this is where we set the the name of the LCD screen that we're using to write to for displaying the inventory dashboard. And so if we search down here, we can see where it's used. So we do grid terminal system, get block with name, console name, and we turn it into an iMyText panel or cast it to an iMyText panel. This is then our iMyText panel console and then 
we turn it into we store it in the variable console, and then that's the console is where we set the the content type and we set the font, and then we later down here um, we write text to it, right? And all the remaining calls they all write text. This is kind of the approach that we've been doing before. Now, how do we get to the displays in the cockpit? That's something we need to figure out. I think somebody in the comments on one of my previous scripting videos mentioned that there is an array or something somewhere. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll go and look. I think where we should start, we should find the cockpit first. Because I agree there's probably an array or something on that cockpit that allows us to access the different displays on the cockpit. So let's pull up or let's see if we can find a cockpit. So I'm going to the documentation here and I'm using malware devs uh, MDK SE. Um, this person, they have a great uh, overview of the entire API in Space Engineer. So I highly recommend this. Uh, if you're looking for anything kind of keyword search style, um, this is perfect. So uh, let's start with cockpit. Okay, this is great. I my cockpit. This is probably exactly what we're looking for. So let's click on it and check it out. Okay. Um, so we see now what the what interfaces it implements and a bunch of other information. Now, how do we find the displays on here? And I think what we should do probably is search for display, possibly. Um, display name text, display name, display name text. And by the way, these are not displays, they are actually the um, the name of the entity for displaying, if that makes any sense. I We, we, we saw these before in a previous scripting episode. Um, yeah, I think we had through, so it, we can't find anything with with display. Let's see what else we, I my text surface provider. Okay, this sounds interesting because I'm a text surface. This is not called I'm a text surface. It's I'm a text panel. But it sounds very similar, and it's a provider interface. So maybe this this interface might be implementing the the API to access the individual displays, um, possibly. Let's see what it implements. Surface count, use generic LCD. I might have, yeah, this sounds, this looks great, actually. I'm a projector, programmable block, cryo chamber, cockpit. So... This uh, appears to me to be exactly what we're looking for. Surface count is probably the number of displays in the, in the cockpit or any of these other uh, blocks that implement this interface. Um, and then get surface gives, gives us the I, actual IMI text surface. So I'm, a, I'm curious because IMI text surface is not the exact same interface we've been using here. We've been using IMI text panel. Um, they sound very similar though. And I wonder if there's any relationship between them. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to open this here and then I want to click through to iMyText Surface to look at what this interface actually is. Because no point intended here, on the surface at least, it, it seems very similar. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, this is, okay, so iMyText panel, which is what we are using, inherits from this iMyText Surface. Um, if we're lucky, we're actually not using any methods or, or APIs that are introduced on IMATX panel. And that means we can just replace this IMATX panel with IMATX surface, no, no problem for our entire script. Um, so let's quickly see uh, what are the APIs that we're using. So we're looking here at this console. The console is the IMATX uh, panel. Uh, so here we're using content type and font. And then down here, we're using write text. And I think that's, yeah, that's that's it already. So let's see if they're available already on the iMyText Surface interface. So content type, content type. Yep, there's content type. And then font. Yeah, font is also available. And then write text. And my guess is that is true. Yes. So they're all already available on the iMyText Surface. So we should have no problem to just change this. And this is actually a very important first step to making this work with, with the cockpit panels. 
I, it's a small change, but I do want to test it. So we are going to um, run a task and then export. Okay. And then let's uh, jump in here. I packed my engineer up in the upper area because that is... Um, the upper area has uh, is pressurized. Actually, we need to do it over here. So, edit. This is the script here. Browse scripts. Inventory dashboard. Um, copy to editor. So let's quickly check if this is the actual actually the updated version. Yes, I might text surface. Okay. Let's do okay. This looks good. Let's double check if it's actually. Uh, this should update now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's working. Perfect. Then let's see if we can... If we can uh, make the changes so that it can write to any display on any block. There's a couple things that we need to consider. First of all, we want to continue... We want it to be easy to write to a LCD panel, if there is one, by just providing the... Uh, where is it here? Console name, right? Up here. If the the block provided here itself is not an IMITEX surface, then uh, but an IMITEX surface provider, then I will also want to be able to specify probably through an index which of the um, uh, IMITEX panels the script should use to write to the to the screen. Um, basically, what this means is we should have an optional, and I don't know if int is the right uh, data type. Actually, yes, it is. So surface count is an integer, isn't it? Let's call it display index. We'll do minus one for now. We don't need this comment here anymore, by the way. That's no longer the case. We're, we're doing that ourselves. If console name points to a I my text surface provider also specify which display index to use. Okay, so now let's go to a code here. So where we're retrieving the, the console. The main thing that we're gonna change here is actually we're going to rename console. And so the, the thing that I wanna rename it to is actually uh, text surface. Um, but I want to keep this here as console and this here as console. And I want to remove this typecast. And now we're going to test if console is I my text surface. And then text surface is null at first. It does not like this. So can we do a I my text surface? Yeah. So if console is I my text surface, then we're gonna assign text surface console. Uh, but we need to tap typecast it. There we go. And then if console is I my text surface provider and then um, we'll do another check in here in a second so for now we're just going to do the simple approach we're just going to say text surface is let's quickly uh, create a temporary buffer here uh, text surface provider equals console as uh, my text surface provider so this will so just to walk you guys through this a little bit um we're still retrieving the block essentially um given the console name and if we don't find the block we'll i'll put an error then we'll check if the the block that we found is an imi text surface if it is we're just going to use that so if we provide an lcd panel like we did before it will just work and continue using that LCD panel directly as its text surface. 
if we provide an a, IMI text surface provider, then we will take that console and cast it to an IMI text surface provider, and then we will find the right surface. So we'll call get surface surface. Is that spelled correctly? Oh, I'm using the wrong. Get surface. And now we provide the, what do we call it? Display index. But here's the thing, display index right now is minus one. Um, and there's also, if there's only, let's say a handful of display, like three or four in the text surface provider, if you provide a large number like a hundred, that would also not work. So I, and instead of just having the script error out with a with cryptic message, I think we should provide a, a more uh, helpful message to the user. So we're going to have another if here. So if display index is smaller than zero um, or display index is larger than or equal to text surface provider dot um, surface count will echo a, a mess an error string format error fail to find display zero and then we'll output the on block or actually let's call it text surface provider one and then we'll provide con uh, display index and console name and let's format that a little bit nicer so we can actually see most of it at least. Let's see. Okay. And then we'll also need to return, right? Uh, we don't want to continue execution here. Um, and so then the last thing that I want to do here is if there is no text surface and there is no text surface provider. Um, and I think the easiest way to do this is just if text surface so now we'll just copy this here why is this I guess yes that that'll work okay um so block zero is neither a uh, text surface or nor text surface provider. So now, if I export this again, on task, export space engineer script. And if you, if you want to learn how to use VS code to write, um, space engineer script, I'll, uh, I'll link to my video that uh, help kind of walks you through how to set up VS Code and how to integrate with Space Engineers and whatnot uh, in the in the um, uh, description below. And I probably also put the little where is it up here? Uh, the little kind of uh, uh, link on in the video. This is exported. Let's get into Space Engineers. We are still alive, even though we were not in pressurized space. Now we just need to reload this here. These other scripts here, by the way, that I think I'm pretty sure this is in Steam and this here is in Mod.io, the exported versions of the script. And I will update the script. I will both publish the changes to GitHub as well as upload the um, updated scripts to the workshop. Okay, copy editor. Let's double check that we actually got the changes. 
Yeah, so we have the changes here. Let's hit OK. OK, it says error file to find display minus one on text surface provider inventory dashboard. Now, this is interesting. And. Oh, so there's two things that is interesting. This is actually a nice miss, uh, like a, um, how we say this, uh, a, a lucky mistake, so to say. If the LCD screen is also a text panel provider, then we can just change the default number here, right, to zero. And I assume a um, the panel will then be in zero for uh, the the yeah the, the text panel will be in slot zero for the text surface for the LCD panel. So in that case, we should be able to just remove this here. Is not a text surface. Oops, provider. Let's export that again. So the reason why I assume or know that the LCD panel block is also an IMI text surface provider is because we actually did branch into this code branch here. Right? And we know that we did because the error said find to fail to find display minus one on text surface provider inventory dashboard, which is this error message here. So we know this code executed. Um, let's do edit, browse scripts. Let's uh, go up to editor again. Okay. So far, no error message. That's good. Maybe hit run just to be sure. Yeah. Oh, and it's rendered. Let's quickly nuke it just to be sure that it will get recreated. Yeah. The big question is... Can I get it to be displayed on this programmable block instead? So now if we just rename this here. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. So clearly the, uh, the list is, the display is smaller. So it can't show this the full list but it it's working so that's awesome uh nice one thing that we might want to consider doing we might want to have the ability to actually write this to multiple displays in the same base um so instead of just uh providing one console name and display index here, uh, one might be able to provide multiple of them. And there's, I think there's a, uh, one way to, for example, do this is instead of providing the name of the block, um, either you could, we could make it so that you could provide an array of console names indexes, um, which is easy enough, uh, I think to do. So maybe I'll give that a quick shot. But I, I also like the idea of um, poss possibly using uh, custom data to just kind of like say, hey, this block wants to be ren rendering the inventory dashboard or something like that. Um, let's try the array approach though quickly because I think that might be simple. <laughs>
There we go. It rendered. Okay. So now, if we want to display it on both screens, on this one and on the little one, uh, on the little one and on this one over there, we should be able to just edit and then add a new key value pair and do inventory dashboard programmable block and display it on screen zero. Oh, I forgot to close the, there we go. So one, um, yes, nice. So one uh, reason for why you might want to, why we want uh, to be able to control which displays to show this on through the custom data is because right now, if we want to make a, a, a change to where to show the, the dashboard on, we'll need to make a code change. And if we update the code, make changes like in our original source code and copy this back in here, this will override all our, our code changes, like uh, these um, uh, names, right? And then we'd have to reset them all up. Uh, and that way we basically decouple our, our user supplied data, like with the names of the, the, the dashboards, for example, from the, from the actual code. Uh, I won't worry about that right now, but that might be something that we'll tackle next time. Okay. So since we have done this, I think I want to try this now uh, quickly at the MMR. So let's fly over here. And here's our dashboard. Cool. The minus, by the way, I think it is fully expanded. It's basically done. Whoa, what happened down here? Why did it not mine us out properly? I'm a little bit confused. This, uh... Okay. I'm not gonna worry about this right now. But I will need to worry about this at some point. So what we should be able to do... We'll just figure out what this cockpit is named. MMR Industrial Cockpit. And on which display we want to show it in. So let's get in here. Let's, uh do it instead of the clock here. This is the programmable block. Let's go in here, do uh, edit, draw scripts, and we'll copy this in. And now we just need to add a new key value pair here. And then I guess this might be zero. Check code, completion successful, okay. This is still displaying. Now, aha, uh -huh, I can already see it. Nice. Um, the only thing that we might want to do is sort the dashboard by amounts. Um, if you can actually display the whole dashboard, that's not really relevant. But if you can only display a subset of all the, the ores and ingots, then having those on top that are actually present probably makes sense. Cool, let's uh, head back and uh, think about the dashboard syncing. One thing I need to establish is, um, is it even possible to read the dashboard content off of a dashboard? That is really important because if we can't do that, then we'll have a, a problem. Um, yes, it seems possible. So GetTech should, should do that. Now we need a way to send the, the text to another grid, essentially. And I think we need to do a little bit of searching here. I'm pretty sure it's possible. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it involves the antenna. Script antenna. Scripting antenna communication. That sounds good. And here's a tutorial. Also, I'm going to quickly open this as well. We use IGC instead of the antenna block. Uh, yes. So message contains a tag. Okay. Tag should be chosen to be unique or to match a known tag. Data, the actual data of the message. Uh, 
Simplest message string, yeah. The source of the message, who sent it, yeah. Okay, receiving a message. Check for messages existing on a channel with half pending messages. Get the next message in the channel with accept message. Okay, so this is like typical kind of message passing API. Um, nothing crazy. Yes, IGC send broadcast message, the tag and the string. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to create a new script. We're going to run task, create space engineer script, and we're gonna call it dashboard replication. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done. <laughs> I got carried away a little bit, but um, let me walk you through everything I did because I did end up doing a little bit more than I had originally anticipated. So I moved these dashboards up here. You can see this is just our regular inventory dashboard and our regular to-do list. But um, if we turn around, we now have these dashboards here. Um, you see on the left are the iSpace dashboards, and this one is the MMR dashboard. I have I left some space for some more um, dashboards in the future. Uh, and you can see, if you pay attention to this dashboard, it will change occasionally. And that is because stuff is happening at the iSpace while we are over here. And this dashboard will reflect it. So... The dashboard synchronization script is actually working. And I will walk you through the code and show you the code in just a little bit. Um, this dashboard synchronization script will synchronize the uh, iSpace to-do list, the iSpace uh, inventory dashboard, and the MMR inventory dashboard. And before we look at the other stuff, and there is some more stuff, um, let's quickly uh, look at the code and I'll walk you through how the code works. Okay. Here, this is the the synchroni dashboard synchronization script. Um, it got relatively long, but it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, I am using a... So, 
there's a couple things that I created um, that are more like kind of um, tools that I used in the script. Um, specifically, I created a couple of debug uh, helpers up here. Um, we can, these are basically just methods that output stuff to the console. Um, they, they all essentially just use echo, but I, I broke them out so that I could update these in the future to using other output meta methods. For example, writing directly to the um, programmable block screen here would be an option. Um, but regardless of that, the other helper that I created is the self uh, method. Um, basically what it does is I can call that within the script and it will give me the programmable block that the script is running on. Curiously, there is no kind of like standard API method to do that. So you actually need to ask for all programmable blocks on the grid, and then you find the programmable block that is currently running, meaning executing your script, and that is the programmable block. Um, so it's it's not it's not super complicated. Uh, so you can see here, uh, this I'm getting all the programmable block. Uh, a blocks here get blocks of time programmable block um and then if the the there should be um uh, and I'm providing a, a filter here block block is running right and it, this should this should return exactly one programmable block because only one script can execute at a time uh, so only one program programmable block can have the is running flag set over here and so I'm just doing a double check here that this count is not equal if the count is for whatever reason not equals one if it's zero or larger then we'll throw an exception uh the whole script won't work uh, if that's the case and it should never be the case but you never know the game may update and suddenly two scripts can be running in parallel and suddenly this would happen and then i cache the result um on in the variable so that next time uh, when we call this again we don't have to query the grid terminal system um the other helper class that i created is a config class um I won't go into too much detail here, but basically what it does, it reads the configure like a, a string, you pass it a string, and it breaks that string out into uh, a config class that you can query for specific configuration parameters. Um, and the way that this works, you, I'll publish this code to GitHub uh, as well as to the workshop, so you feel free to kind of like dig in a little bit more. Uh, but essentially the way that this works, I'm going to show you here on the actual terminal block because the grid replication script is actually configured through that. So the the actual data lives on custom data of the grid terminal block. And you can see here there's like, um, right in this configuration right now, there's three sections. Um, there's a receiver section here, uh, and then here another receiver section, and here another receiver section. And then the, the parameters of the, the options that you set in the configuration, the configuration options is a tag, a block, and a surface. Um, and you uh, assign these for each of the three receiver sections. Um, and then in the actual code, let me oh, make this a little bit larger here for now, but we won't need the documentation. This is how the configurations uh, class is instantiated. So we, we're creating a new config and we're passing in custom data as the argument. And then you, you can just iterate over the sections in config sections, and then you can get the section name, and then you can ask each section for a configuration value um, providing, uh, and it will return you that or a default value if, if it can't find it. So in this part here in the program initializer, we basically pass out the configuration that is provided uh, in, the, in the custom data um and then each each receiver is a dashboard receiver so you you subscribe to a specific igc tag and i'll, I'll show you guys that in the in the code in just a just a moment uh, uh this is for the integrated communication where the messages are being sent and received from different grids then you specify which dashboard you want to write to when you receive a message and then you specify which surface within that dashboard so if they're and this dashboard could be any grid that is a um, a uh, text surface provider. So it could be a cockpit that has a display, for example, or it could be a programmable, excuse me, a programmable block that has a display or a fact too, um, and so forth. Right. So 
so basically you say like, hey, listen to this tag, messages on this tag, and if you receive a, a message, write to this dashboard or block uh, and this specific surface. Um, in my case, they're all just LCD screens right now. Um, right there's the, the MMR inventory dashboard, the iSpace inventory dashboard, and the iSpace to-do list. And each of them uses its own tag. So this here is IGC tag sync MMR dashboard, IGC tag sync ice inventory dashboard, and IGC tag sync ice to-do dashboard. And I've put programmable blocks in these locations that uh, instead of specifying receivers, they specify transmitters. And the, the configuration for that looks very similar, and we'll, we'll take a look at it um, in a second, just a second. Um, but yeah, so this is how this works. And then, and here you can see um, we are going through all the sections, and we're looking for transmitter sections, and we're looking for the receiver sections. We'll look for we'll look at the receiver section code first, uh, because that's what we just looked at in the configuration. You know, for each section, um, we get the block name. If the, there is no block name specified, we'll print a, an, uh, a warning. Um, we get the surface and uh, the, the index of the surface. Uh, and if it's not specified, we'll default to zero. Um, and then we'll get the IGC tag. And if it's not specified, we'll just use the, the dashboard name uh, as default. You should, I, so while you could get away with not specifying this, you sh probably should. Um, and then uh, we have this helper class here, the text surface reference, and we'll take a quick look at this in a second as well. Actually, let's do it right now. Yeah, let's just click on this. It should take us right there. Yeah. So this is just a little um, helper class uh, that we can store the provider name and the index on. And then we have a, uh, a helper variable here, hash cache, and I'll show you guys that just a second as well. That's a little performance optimization that I uh, did add. And once we've created this reference, we then use the get surface method, which I wrote, um, passing in that reference that will return the text surface. It's just a helper method that basically takes the text surface reference and grabs its the provider name and the index that is stored in there, and then just goes through the terminal uh, uh, system, grabs the blocks with that name, checks if the if it finds a block, checks if it's a if it's a surface uh, provider block. Uh, and if it is a service provider block, it checks if the provided index is within the range of services for that service provider. Um, and if it if it pa like if any of these fail, it, it prints an error message and aborts. Um, if they all succeed, it will return the the text surface, um, uh, I my text surface for that specific uh, block. So it's just a little helper method. So and then I can check if. If we have a text surface returned, if not, we'll just continue on to the next config entry. If we have a text surface, um, we will then add it to the receiving dashboards list. And the receiving dashboards list is, uh, sorry, it's not a list, it's a dictionary that maps a tag name or a tag, an IGC tag, to a list of surface references. So meaning every tag can be pushed to multiple receivers. So if you have a base and you want have a remote dashboard, but two, multiple remote dashboards. So you want to show the same dashboard. The dashboard lives somewhere else, like let's say on the MMR or at the iSpace, and you want to render the dashboard on multiple locations in, in your home base, then you can do that. Whereas the, the transmitting dashboard doesn't do that. It just maps from a string, which is the IGC tag, to one dashboard. So every dashboard that you... Uh, um, the way that it is set up, you will only have a single dashboard uh, transmitting messages to a single IGC tag. And then if there are no dashboards with that tag yet in the receiving dashboards map uh, or dictionary, then we'll create an entry uh, and a new list. Um, and then we'll add the dashboard to that list. And then we're creating these broadcast listeners, uh, which is basically telling the IGC, the integrate communication system, hey, we would like to receive messages with the given tag here, um, right? So we'll, we'll create a broadcast listener for each receiving dashboard. And then we go over all the receiving dashboards and uh, create a, a broadcast listener with the with the tag name. The key here is the, is the tag for the IGC tag. So all of this up there so far was kind of like set up. And basically the main function is pretty straightforward as well. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through all transmitting dashboards, right? All the dashboards that are sending. Uh, 
I'll skip over this part for now because we're we just looked we're just looking at receiving dashboards so far. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll deal with the transmitting dashboards, and once we've done with that, we're, we're going to go to the listening dashboards, and that, we do that by iterating over all the broadcast listeners that we've created previously, and then we're checking if there are pending messages. Basically, is there something waiting in the queue um, that we need to respond to or react to? Um, if there is, we'll accept the message, uh, and then we'll see if um, any of the receiving dashboards is is kind of registered to the tag to which the message belongs. So the message has a tag assigned and we'll check, hey, do we have any receiving dashboards that are waiting for a message with that tag? Um, if not, we'll just continue on and go to the next message. Um, but if we do find a receiving dashboard, we will grab the uh, surface references. So in this case, receiving dashboards is a list of dashboards that are listening to this tag. So there might be multiple dashboards waiting for this message. So we'll iterate over the list of these surface references. And then for, for each of those dashboards that we have a surface reference for, for, we then use our helper method, the get surface call again, to actually retrieve the surface that we can write to, right? If we don't find the surface, we'll just skip on and continue on. Um, we'll also just skip on and continue on if the data in the my message is not actually a string because that's what we expect to. And if we did receive a string, we will just go and replace whatever content the, the, the dashboard surface is currently showing with the message in that string. Um, let's quickly fly over to the um, uh, MMR and I'll show you how the sending part works. Uh, I'll see you there. Okay, this here is the MMR dashboard replication uh, programmable block. Each of these blocks can transmit and receive, but uh, right now all of the, the, the home base is only receiving and the outposts are only transmitting. This programmable block is also configured using custom data. And the only difference here is that the section is not a receiver, but it is a transmitter. Um, basically, what this tells the, the script now is, hey, I want you to grab this inventory dashboard um, and the surface zero in it. And I want you to um, post messages to this IGC tag whenever it changes. And this is actually a, 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 a little optimization that I did the, um, whenever it changes part but we'll, we'll look at this in a second um and so when we go into the actual script and this again this is the same script right um the same script handles transmitting and receiving the same thing it passes the config here um in the program part right but this time it it finds a section um that is a transmitter right so it will create a, a transmitter surface a transmitting surface uh, it'll do the same things again, it'll read the block name, it'll get the index and yada yada yada, find the surface, and then add that to the transmitting dashboards. And so then if we actually go to the main function, what this main function will do is on every 100th tick, um, because that's how often it runs, it will iterate over all the, the transmitting dashboards um, it will grab the surface reference and the tag, um, and then we'll get the, the surface using the surface reference, right? Again, it uses our get surface helper function. And if it can't find the surface, it just continues on. By the way, the get surface method here, it will print um, warnings if it can't find the surface. So th this helper method will take care of kind of like communicating to the user, hey, like, like your name is wrong or whatever. Um, and if it finds the surface, it will go and then read the text um, from the surface. And I, I, there is there is a just in case you ever want to mess with this yourself, there's a surface dot get text method which returns a string. Uh, this read text method here uh, creates a text buffer, a, 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 a string reader. I originally used the get text method. But for some reason, it didn't reliably work. There were cases where it just returned an empty string, even though there was something on the dashboard. I'm not quite sure why that is. If you have any insight into why that would happen, um, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. Uh, but I found that using retext and a string builder um, works reliably, whereas the get text method did not. Um, so retext into a, a string builder, uh, call to string on a string builder to get the actual string. 
And this comment here is big and large and actually talks about the performance optimization. We'll skip over that for just one second. And then we'll just send that text to the tag. And then all the dashboards that are subscribed to that tag will then get that updated text and will display it. Um, and so by default, what would happen here is that every 100 ticks, we would read all the dashboards and send all the dashboards. I'm not entirely sure how robust this, this like from a performance perspective, this whole scripting system is. Um, uh, but like especially with large dashboards that have a lot of content, that could can be relatively large strings that may, might have to be copied around and moved around. And especially when running uh, um, on a server, might even have to be transmitted over the network and other things. So um, I decided to add a little bit of a performance optimization here. Um, this significantly reduces the amount of transmits that we do especially for things like the inventory dash, uh, uh, the, the to-do dash dashboard that's, that virtually never changes. But due to hash collisions, it's it's possible that the dashboard actually changes in some way and the update doesn't get transmitted because the change dashboard is the generates the same hash. If you ever run into a problem where you make changes to your dashboard and it will not update, if you do the same change, um, then you might want to check this out. Okay, and then, yeah, as I said, the text gets broadcasted. Um, and then the other side receives it. So uh, just to be clear, to for these um, synchronization scripts to work, you do need antennas on your grids. So I added the large grid antenna here on, on the MMR. Um, and you want to make sure... Um, as this was just bit me uh, for a moment at the ice base that you have the transmit strength of your antennas sufficiently high. The ice base is like what 20 kilometers away or something and the default antenna range is only five. So yeah. okay, yeah, so this is how these dashboards 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 work. There's a little bit more. Uh, I made some updates to the inventory dashboard as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you this in just a second. But before we that, do that, there's a couple of non-scripting related things that I updated that I also quickly want to talk about. So I talked about wanting to reroute the conveyors for the cargo ship unloading. And you just got another glimpse up there. Uh, which I did. I removed the the assembler here, and now the conveyors that come from the cargo ship go directly over here, over here, and then go down and go into the, the cargo container section. Um, and then I installed an oxygen tank. <laughs> I, I ran out of ice. Um, I was completely dry on ice, and I didn't notice until my hydrogen was empty as well. Um, I guess I had four, I don't know where I got it from, I had 14 ice left. Um, and I was able to bootstrap from there again. I took my my mining craft and sunk into the uh, flew it over into the MMR and kind of ground out a little bit more of the ice that was exposed there. So we have ice again. But um, so I introduced this oxygen tank for uh, and and put a um, an external vent that can suck air in. Uh, and store that in the oxygen tank so, such that um, whenever we open and close the pressurized area here, when we walk through these doors, right, we don't uh, kind of just chew through all of our ice. I hope at least the oxygen tank and the, the outside vent will, will help us do that. So yeah, the other thing that I did is I uh, improved this area just slightly, like added a little bit of a stairs here, added some railings here. There's also a little change that I made to the cargo hauler, the cargo ship. We now have a dashboard of its inventory in here. And this ties into the, the changes that I made to the dashboard script um, that I kind of briefly alluded to. Um, I don't know if you notice, obviously the ship is empty um, right now, but the order of the items in this list here is different than what it typically is. And the reason for that is that 
I added um, the uh, cos uh, configuration options to the to the inventory script as well. So if you go to custom data, it's the same kind of like principle. You specify sections and then uh, options, or you can also specify options outside of a section. I I don't use that in the other script, but that's something you can do with this uh, with the config class. And so <clears throat> uh, the sections you specify which dashboards you want to um, write the inventory dashboard to, and you you can specify multiple dashboards here. Uh, if you don't if you don't specify any dashboards, it will default to the to the old default value that was um, uh, set in the script. So if you configure your dashboards through the custom data on the programmable block, uh, you will be able to update the script um, without overriding like your configuration. And so even as I publish like new versions of the script uh, or whatever, you can just go and, and pull them in from workshop without having to worry about your uh, dashboard names, for example, be being overwritten that you have to like restore every time. So this is pretty cool um, for that reason alone. Uh, but I also added two more custom uh, options here. Um, I added a local grid only option and I added an auto sort option. And the auto sort option is actually both of these are we can see at work here. Um, so the auto sort option will simply sort all the inventory items by uh, how much of it there is. So if the and it will just simply add ingots and ore together and then basically sort them by that. So if there's if you have a lot of something, it will show at the top of the list. And if you have less of something, it will show further down the list. Right now, the entire inventory is empty, so everything is at zero. The other thing is the local grid only. So by default, the inventory dashboard uh, actually traverses uh, not only the cargo containers on your current grid, but all connected grids. So if you have dock chips or have cow containers in subgrids, then the inventory script will find those and add the, the, the inventory to the to the um, to the dashboard, which makes sense uh, in a, uh, in most situations, especially like when you have like uh, subgrids in the form of hinges or pistons or stuff like that that you want to include. Um, uh, it makes sense, but especially if you have like a dashboard like on a ship. Like like this here that that ends up being docked a lot, you probably don't want to in, like display the inventory of the entire base here. I think we got a lot of stuff done, more than anticipated. Spent more time on it as well, um, but I think it, I at least I had fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do it and watching me walk you through the changes. Um, at I had fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do the change, make the changes and walking you through it as well. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video and the things that I worked on, please give it a thumbs up. It greatly helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. I upload Space Engineers videos twice a week and there's lots of other stuff to explore on the channel. If you know people that might find this video interesting as well, please make sure to share it with them. That's the best way to help the channel grow. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate your time and see you guys next time.